Hi everyone. Years ago I built this gyroscope flying saucer device to test something out, and because I thought it'd be a joy to make and cool to see in action. So here's a fun video I made about it. When I was a kid, my older brother had a magazine article with a diagram in it of how to make a flying saucer, one that actually flies, or so the article said. It consisted of a platform with a bunch of gyroscopes on it. The idea was that when the gyroscopes and the platform are both spinning in the right directions, then the whole thing is supposed to lift off the ground. Why would it do that? If you spin the wheel of a gyroscope like this, and then you rotate the whole thing like this, then the gyroscope does some rotating of its own. Notice that when I rotate it this way, this end goes up and this end goes down. And when I rotate it this way, this end goes down and this end goes up. This is called a gyroscopic precession. If I held it at only one end like this and did the same thing, then only this end would go up. At least that's what it seems like. Really, when this end goes up, my hand experiences a downward force at the same time. Uh, but that's not noticeable to me. And it looks like a unidirectional upward force on one end only. So ignoring reality, like this magazine article was doing, what if you held it firmly by that one end so the other end can't rotate upward? Wouldn't that create lift? And if you mount a bunch of them on a platform like this, have all of them spinning, and then rotate the platform, you're doing the same thing. All the gyroscopes will want to rotate in this direction. But since we're not letting them, they create a unidirectional force taking the platform up with them. Well, around eight years ago, I realized I had the skills to build and test this. And even though I knew it wouldn't work, I couldn't resist. Here's a photo of it taken eight years ago, sitting on a digital scale. And here it is with both discs spinning. Before turning it on, I'd zero the scale. I tested with the disc ends able to rise, and again with the disc ends held horizontal so they couldn't rise. Unfortunately, and as expected, the values on the scale never moved from zero. Sadly, I hadn't taken any video of it back then, but I've reassembled it now so you can see it in action. So here's the setup. Down here I have a drill which is connected to a shaft which goes through these bearings and up to these two arms. On each of the arms I have a motor which is connected to a shaft which is connected to my gyroscope disc, which as you can see is just a vinyl record. And likewise on the other side. Um, in here you'll see that there's a hinge and this hinge allows this whole thing to swivel up like this if it wants to. And same thing on the other side. In terms of wiring, this motor right here is connected to these slip rings right here, which make contact with these metal strips which go down to through these wires to the power supply. And I can control the speed of that motor using this variac right here. So that controls the speed of the rotation of the gyroscope disc. Uh, one thing to point out is that the power supply is only powerful enough to power one of these motors. So I'm going to run this one right here with fancy tape on it. One last thing to point out, the uh, drill is permanently on. You can see there's a tie strap around the switch right here. Instead the plug goes down to this foot switch right here, which I can use to drill the turn the drill on or off. So in other words I can turn on or off this rotation here. Alright, let's fire it up. So I'll press the foot switch. It starts the drill. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org. There you'll find all kinds of other neat science and tech videos from making solar cells, Van de Graaff machines, piezoelectric crystals, fun with magnetic fields, and so on. And don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like these videos. Bye for now.